there's no doubt about it. This is an outrage. It's a gross violation of human rights. I still remember the testimony that Lorraine, Tony Taylor's wife, gave to the Good Friday uh, Agreement Committee about the devastating impact that the swoop operation which picked Tony up over two years ago has had on their family under the vague assertion of the Northern Ireland office that he was a risk to the public unverified by any court, still incarcerated after two years. No evidence presented to him. This is internment by another name, and it is utterly shocking. It's a fundamental right of a democratic justice system that anybody who's under any accusation should know the case against them. If this was happening anywhere else, We'd be up in arms giving out about it happening on this island, a gross violation of human rights, and we really have to intervene to ensure that there is an early hearing and this man is allowed to go back to his family. Thank you, Mr. Holder, and thanks for speaking to the subject. Uh, Minister Tanishta, when in March 16, Tony Taylor was, ar was arrested under the revoking of his licence. Um, thanks, Ciarán Corla, and, and thanks, Tony. In some ways, there's a kind of a, a strange irony between the similarity of Tony Taylor's case and the case of Ibrahim Halawa, where people were justifiably outraged in that case about court dates being cancelled, no clue as to the charges against him, and basically him and his legal team being left in the dark. That's exactly what's happening on this island with Tony Taylor and his legal representatives. And it's an incredibly worrying precedent which is adding to political instability in Northern Ireland at a time when some uh, dissident groups have renounced a violence and committed to peace. So it's undermining that process. It is also the continuance of a sort of a quasi uh, judicial system, non-transparent, which really it should be consigned to another era existing gross violations of human rights and, and I would, uh, I'm glad that you do know th the particular concern and I would hope that you will raise it not just with the British authorities but also with your EU counterparts to try and make the British government see sense for an early hearing on this. Thanks, Senator. Uh, Minister Tanisha, I too welcome.